Hi, this is Ralph DeFranzo. And this is Ed Kalerchian. And we're going to show you how to install the computer and monitor hardware on your new MSN fixture. Once you're finished, you'll be able to show your customers the benefits of the MSN Internet Network so you can offer $400 rebates more effectively. And after DSL high-speed internet service is connected to your store, which may take a month or two in a few cases, you'll be able to let your customers surf the web and see for themselves the advantages that DSL has over traditional dial-up modems. And you'll be able to sell high-speed service soon once we grand open the Microsoft Internet Center later this year. Before you set up the computer and monitor hardware, an installer will set up your Microsoft Internet fixture for you. Your responsibility is to check to see that all the work has been done well. Look carefully at the fixture and make sure it's been assembled correctly. The blue tabletop and the Microsoft sign at the top of the fixture should be facing your front door. Do you see anything damaged? Point it out so the installer can order you a replacement part from the MSN help group. Check to see that the lights are all on. Make sure that the installer has locked these feet so they rest firmly on the floor. They keep the unit from rolling. Look at the carpet tiles. Make sure that they have all been replaced neatly and that the work area is clean. Don't let these guys off the hook if you're not satisfied. You don't have to sign the completion checklist unless you're sure that the work has been performed correctly. After the installer is done, you can unpack your computer hardware and start the installation. You'll need flat blade and Phillips screwdrivers, some wire ties, about six feet of speaker wire, and a needle nose plier. You're going to mount the monitor on the bracket on the blue tabletop. Let's start there. We're using the floor fixture in our example, but if you have a wall fixture, the same instructions apply. Before you begin, make sure that the electricity to the power strips is turned off. Remove the bracket from the fixture. Then remove one of the bolts that holds the bracket face, which is the big flat piece, from the bracket arm. Next, we need the monitor cable from the monitor. Both ends of the cable are exactly the same. Feed one end through this hole in the bracket face. If it doesn't fit, you may have to remove the second bolt. Remove the collar ring around the center pipe and run the other end of the monitor cable down the center support pole and into the fixture's cabinet. Next, place the monitor's power supply inside the fixture. Connect it to the power strip, then feed the monitor power cord up through the center support pole. Don't put it through the collar ring, though. Then, feed the end of the power cord through the monitor bracket face. Next, we're going to reconnect the monitor bracket face to the monitor bracket arm. You won't drive yourself crazy fitting all of those washers back in if you keep the screw hole towards you and slide the washers between the bracket face and the arm. Now, connect the monitor cable and the monitor power cord to the back of the monitor. Now we can attach the reassembled monitor bracket to the monitor. Line up the two L-shaped brackets on the back of the monitor with the square holes on the monitor bracket face. Then slide the bracket toward the top of the monitor to hold it in place. There should be a bag of small Phillips screws with the computer. The two holes at the bottom of the monitor aren't threaded. Use the screws in the two top holes. Feed the monitor and power wires through the cutout on the center support pole when you hang the monitor bracket. Then replace the collar pipe ring. Okay, the monitor is installed. Next up is the speakers. To install the speakers, you need to remove one of the graphic panels. Two of the panels can't be removed. You can only remove the panel that isn't held to the shelf with L brackets and screws. Push up on one of the brackets holding that panel and gently flex outward. The speakers and subwoofer will go on these two shelves. First, place the satellite speakers on the top shelf and connect them to each other using the standard 1 8 inch plug. Then set the controls to the 12 o'clock position. Now, place the subwoofer on the lower shelf and connect it to the satellites. Use the blue plug. The speaker system comes with two audio patch cables. Attach the cable with one purple end to the purple analog jack on the back of the subwoofer. Run the green end into the base of the fixture. Make sure that the collaring is back on the center support pipe before you do. Place the speaker's power supply in the cabinet of the fixture and plug it in. You will need to fish the power supply cord for the speaker system from the bottom of the fixture up through the center support pole. Now here's a hint for you. Run a piece of speaker wire down through the center support pole and then tape it to the power supply cord. 
Then, pull the speaker wire and power cable up through the support pole and collaring to the top. After you plug it in, set the volume to the 12 o'clock position. You'll be able to control it from the keyboard later. Speaking of the keyboard, put it and the mouse out now. Their cords go down the cutout on the bottom of the center pipe. Now it's time to make all the connections to the CPU and power it up. The power and monitor connections are all pretty standard. Just make sure that you plug the green audio plug into the green jack on the back of the CPU. And plug the mouse into the left PS2 port. The Microsoft keyboard has both USB and PS2 plugs. Use the USB plug and plug it into the top port. If high-speed bandwidth, DSL or satellite, has been installed in your store, the installer should have left you a Cat5 jumper cable. Hook this cable from the phone jack in the floor near your fixture to the DSL modem jack on the back of the CPU. The next step is to install the printer, power it up, and connect it to the CPU. If the printer cable is missing, you can use a 26-166, 26-626, or 26-631 store stock cable. Don't substitute other cables. Follow the printer's instructions to install the printer cartridges and paper. And now for the final details. Use split loom tubing around the speaker system's audio and power wire. Don't put it around this black high voltage three conductor AC wire, which is for the lights. It should be left separate to maintain UL standards. Instead, wire tie it to the outside of your split loom covered wire bundle. Remove the backing from the Velcro on the monitor shroud and press it firmly against the monitor. Remove the second monitor bracket. You may get another CPU and monitor at a later time. And stow it away for future use. Power up the printer first, then the CPU. Always do it in that order, or at the same time, or you won't be able to print. Even if you don't have DSL service yet, you can still test your system. The computer is configured with built-in demo software. You can show a customer what benefits they get from the MSN network by choosing MSN, the everyday web. The demo will run by itself. Or you can advance through it faster by using the next keys. This is a great tool to help you when you're telling customers about MSN rebates. If you want to show customers an example of what DSL does for them, choose the test drive DSL button to start a built-in simulation. Choose the speed test button to simulate how much faster DSL is than dial-up. Of course, if you're already connected to DSL, you can choose Exit and see for real just how fast DSL is by surfing the web. The PG parts, anyway. Well, that's the installation in a nutshell. Check the written instructions for complete details. Good luck. Good installing. And good selling.